Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to take star photos and star trail photos without a telescope. All you need is some kind of a basic camera, and I have a couple of cameras here to show you. You can use older cameras, you can use newer cameras, but there's a few things you need to know to, to try to get it right. Um, two most imp the two most important points about taking star photos, so you can see some of the photos I took here. To the two most important points about taking star photos is one, you need a camera that's going to be able to stay open. The shutter is going to be able to stay open for a long period of time. Now that could be anywhere from five seconds to several hours if you wanted. And the longest exposure I took was 20 minutes. So some cameras are able to do that. That's called the bulb setting. Some cameras can't do that and some cameras can't. So you have to check your camera to see if you can do that. And another thing to note is, especially with newer cameras, the shutter stays open with the battery. So if you're going to be taking long exposures, you may, you may drain your battery, so you might want extra batteries to bring with you. So my camera here doesn't need the battery to open the shutter. I have an old 35 millimeter camera, and I'll show you here. So here's the shutter here. And what I have here is this nice, really nice device. If you have a 35 millimeter camera, you might want to consider one of these devices. This is called a release cable. It cost me $10, and I'll explain more about this. But let me, let's take a look here. See, the shutter is open. Now, I can leave that shutter open for a long period of time, as, as long as I want. Uh, I took pictures ranging anywhere from a second to five seconds, 30 seconds, up to my longest exposure was 20 minutes for star photos. So that's what you got to think about. You need a camera that the shutter will stay open for a long period of time. The second thing you need to think about is stability of the camera. It's absolutely necessary for you to have the camera move not at all. It's got to be on a tripod or in some kind of a structure where it won't move. And part of that is your moving the camera. So if I tried taking some pictures with the camera on a tripod and holding the shutter button down by hand. Just the vibration from me standing there for 30 seconds holding the button was too much and the pictures didn't come out too good and I'll show you one of those pictures that's a good example of that. The picture is shaky. So that's why I have this cable release. This is really nice. Can release the shutter and lock it in place. like this, and then lock it, and now that shutter will just stay open for as long as I want it to. And when I'm done with the picture, I can unlock it and close the shutter back. And this, this won't cause any vibrations in the camera from my hands or from me touching it. So it's kind of nice. This little cable release is $10 if you can get a hold of one. I highly recommend it. So now, But now I'm going to show you how to take the actual pictures. You don't want, when that shutter goes off, the camera vibrates, so you don't want to catch any of that, and I'm going to show you how to get around that. Okay, so this is actually what you do when you take the picture. You're all set up. Um, give your camera time to adjust to the outside air. It may get foggy, so you want to give it a little bit of time to adjust to that and clean the lens if need be. Take a look at it. You don't want your pictures to be fuzzy. This is the important thing that you do. When you're ready to take the picture, you have it set. You have it set on infinity for focus. You have your opening to bulb, so it'll stay open for a long period of time. Now, before you release the shutter, you cover the lens with something like this. See, I cover it with a hat here. Then you trigger your shutter. I'm just going to lock this in place. Trigger the shutter so the shutter is now open, but it's totally dark because it's covered with something. Now, to take the picture, you remove your, your object and then set your exposure. It could be one second, it could be five seconds, it could be 30 seconds, it could be up to anywhere. 30 seconds usually is about as far as you go before you start to get a star trail. You get pretty good sharp pictures at around 30 seconds, but you can experiment with that. Then when your ex exposure is done, you cover, the, you cover the lens again like this, 
this, and then you can release the shutter. So in that way, the, the vibration of the camera touching it and moving it in the shutter doesn't affect the picture. So that's a nice way to take really crisp pictures. So that's the, that's the process for doing that. And you can try that with all kinds of cameras. See what your camera can do. See if you have a bulb setting on it so it can stay open for a long period of time. And um, see if you can, if you have an old 35 millimeter like this or something, get, get, a, get yourself a cable release if you can so you can um, set that really nice without, uh, without um, moving anything. Another neat little trick I use to keep the shutter open is a rubber band. You can see I have a rubber band here on the, on the shutter release button. So now I can cover the lens, trigger that, and the rubber band is going to hold that down. So without any vibration, I can do my exposure. Once my exposure is done, cover the lens again, and now I can fiddle with this to, to close the shutter back up. So improvise whatever you need to do to keep the shutter open for long periods of time and to keep the camera absolutely still during your exposure. And using a hat or some kind of object is a great way to do that. You don't need a tripod, you just need it to be secured really well. So I'll show you some pictures of the various things I took. I don't know how they're going to come out in, uh, in this video. I do, I do have the URL in the description of this video. I do have the URL to my website where I have the pictures where you can get a better look at them. And there's a lot of different ways you can take pictures. You can take pictures of... Uh, with objects, earthbound objects in them, which is kind of nice, if you can see that. And uh, you probably can't see this, and you can take pictures of different constellations, and one of my favorite types of pictures is a star trail picture. For this pic picture, I point it directly at the North Star and left the exposure open for half an hour, so I get some nice star trails in a circular pattern. So try, when you're, when you're doing this, take a little notebook with you so you can take notes on what, what pictures you took, how long was the exposure, so you can get a good idea for what comes out the best. And if you're using a 35 millimeter camera, get the fastest speed you can, film you can get. I used um, Fuji 800 speed film, which is a pretty fast film. I think you can get a 1,000 film, but it's not too common. So get the fastest speed film you can get. Um, 400 probably will work fine. I use 800 to work pretty good. I get some great pictures. So check the URL. Uh, go to my telescopenerd.com website if you want to learn more about this, see the pictures a little better, get another tutorial, and learn more about telescopes. Thank you very much.